Mystery in a cab. A man is found dead in the backseat of a taxi after a night out in the city. The police for answers from his friends and family coming up. Timing out the strong showers and thunderstorms and what you can expect by morning. And it's the fuzzy local brand embodying the best of the Bronx. Find out how you can wrap the boogie down with art, apparel, music, and so much more. Hey, what's up, friends? This is News for Now for June 1st. I'm your girl, Kay Ingram. All right, now back to that first wild story I was telling you about that happened to a 25-year-old social worker from Brooklyn who was found dead in a cab during a night out in Hell's Kitchen. His cell phone, gone. Wallet, gone. And now we've learned his bank accounts were drained of $20,000. The family of Julio Ramirez says they believe he was murdered for his money. On April 20th, he went out with friends to several spots before ending the night at the Ritz Bar and Lounge in Hell's Kitchen. They say surveillance video shows him getting into a cab with three unidentified men. Hours later, the taxi driver called police to report Julio as being alone and unresponsive. He later died at a hospital nearby. Julio's family believes someone drugged him and then used his cell phone to wipe out $20,000 from his bank account. Changed the passcode on it, and then they went, they went to town. Took fancy dinners and spas and transferring thousands of dollars here, thousands of dollars there. Someone hurt him. They, they killed him. Now again, the family says Julio did not have his cell phone or wallet on him when he was found in the cab. At this time, police are still investigating and a medical examiner is working to determine a cause of death. So the New York City Department of Health has confirmed that two more people have tested positive for what's presumed to be monkeypox. It's a rare disease caused by the monkeypox virus. Now the department says they're in the middle of contact tracing right now. Monkeypox is still rare in the US. And in fact, as of Tuesday, the CDC says there are 18 confirmed cases nationwide. And that it only spreads through body fluids, sharing clothes and long periods of face-to-face -face contact. And watch this closely. Police are hoping that this surveillance video can help them find a man who they say raped and robbed a woman in a park in the Bronx. Police say this guy waited outside the 38-year-old victim's home in Mott Haven on Beach Terrace and Beekman Ave around 8.30 yesterday morning. When she came outside, they say he pulled out a knife and demanded she follow him to St. Mary's Park. Police say when they got to the park, he raped her and took off with her debit card. The victim was treated at a hospital. Hi there, I'm Storm Team 4, meteorologist Maria La Rosa. Some stormy weather here as we head into the evening and the late night hours. Expect with any of these thunderstorms, maybe some gusty winds, some heavy rainfall, so probably some difficult travel if you have to be out and about late. It's after midnight that we start to see things quiet down a little bit, but again, that heavy rain threat for the afternoon, late evening, and into the early part of the overnight. Once this does clear, we think, see things quiet down, but expect another round of showers and thunderstorms for tomorrow afternoon as temperatures then again climb into the near 80 degree range. We start off though in the 60s, 65 for Central Park. We stay near 60 in Islip, upper 50s from Bridgeport and Eastport. A little warmer off to the west, Clinton, Trenton, Philadelphia into the mid and upper 60s. All right, now to where I'm from in the boogie down, there is a pop in local brand that goes hard for the Bronx in more ways than one. Here's New York Live with their story. If you ask the founders of the Bronx native to describe their hometown, they will tell you the Bronx is a borough full of edge, surprise, and immense pride. So they decided to create a brand that embodies all of that and more. I know it's been said that you're reimagining the Bronx. Like, what does that look like? Yeah, yeah. Everything in this shop represents something, has a story, right? We have art from local artists. We have uh, signatures all around. When you look at the walls, it's an interactive experience because everybody that comes in can tag up the wall, leave their mark, leave their signature. We have items here that represent, you know, the start of the beginning of the Boogie Down Bronx, right? When hip hop was in its infant years, right? We have radios from the 70s. We have signed items, you know, that t-shirt signed by Stan Lee right before he passed away. That wow. was a collaboration we did with 
a local comic book company. We got Big Pun here, you know. We collaborated with brands. This is uh, Feeling Blue. It, it tackles mental health awareness, right? So through our, like, our experiences and events, we're always trying to equip our people with the right tools and the right resources so they can grow, they can win, and they can make it happen. This is Tag Up Studios, where we're about to go to, um, where we are hosting weekly open mics, weekly showcases, and just engaging the community on a daily basis. Each open mic tries to target an element of hip hop, right? So one night we can have an open mic for DJs. We have poetry nights, we have R&B nights, and just trying to create these platforms for expression, for our people to come together and do their thing, you know? Your passion yeah. for your hometown, it's infectious. Oh, thank you awesome. so much. Thank You're you. doing such wonderful yes. things. No, no, thank you so much. All right, so a possum walks into a Brooklyn bar. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. It sounds like it could be the setup to a joke and probably not a good one, but it's actually the setup to an only a New York story. News Force Ida Siegel takes us to Greenpoint where one super brave bar goer didn't hesitate to show that pesky intruder the door. Yes. At Temkin's Bar in Greenpoint, Sarah Fulton is a local celebrity. Everyone here knows her as the hero who saved them all from a terrifying, wild possum. This is her Thursday night. I was just outside hanging out with my friend outside the bar. Uh, the door was open uh, and then all of a sudden we see this critter run in. Sarah says it's really no big deal. She's not from Brooklyn. She's from Alaska. Take another look. That's Sarah grabbing the possum by the scruff. And she walks out the bar and sends him on his way. No muss, no fuss. No! The possum, after all, is tiny compared to the moose family that used to live in her backyard. I think it was just like instinctual. I just like went up to him and I was just like, hey, I know you're afraid because he was just like, <laughs> and so I was just like, all right, I think it's like I'm just going to grab you, scruff you and take you out because I feel like that would be the least painful for you. As you saw in the video, everyone else in the bar promptly panicked. The only wildlife these Brooklynites are used to are cockroaches and rats. That night, they were out of their depth. I mean, everybody just lost their minds. Like, we couldn't believe it was happening. <laughs> and it was like, wait, what do I do? I grabbed my phone, didn't know who to call. I was like, this isn't something that people deal with. By the time the job was done, Sarah was the toast of the town. Drinks lined up for her at the bar. Everyone bought her so many rounds. Yeah, it, it turned into a party afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> everyone was like, that was amazing. Since then, numerous videos of the moment have gone viral. Temkins is enjoying the fame with tongue-in-cheek signs posted around the bar. They're like, you're a, a hero. It's like, you're a celebrity. I'm like, what? <laughs> no. For me, it's just a wild animal. But I just I have to realize, it's like, I'm not in Alaska. And that's not something you see every day. <laughs> in Greenpoint, Ida Siegel, News 4, New York. All right, friends, thanks for joining us. As always, we'll see you back here tomorrow.